By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have some old school tournament magic for you because I had the pleasure of playing and streaming at the Camel Trophy, an old school tournament held in Arnhem. And the cool thing is here I have a few Swiss rounds for you, but I also have the entire top eight on video. So I recorded everything. So I have quarterfinal, semifinal, and final. I will be posting all of them here on the channel. In this movie, we are looking at a Swiss round where I'm actually playing in it with my uh, red, green, and black deck and I'm playing against a dead guy, Ill Brew. So before we're going to the matches themselves, I'd like to point out, uh, I'd like to do a little bit of deck tech, I should say, and I, and I would like to point out that there's also a timestamp in the description below. You can click on the timestamp and that will take you straight to game number one. And talking about the description, if you'd like to know more about this tournament, there's also a link of the tournament's organizer in the description below. So you can click on that and you can read reports and you can get to know more about this Camel Trophy, and here you actually see what we're what we're dueling for today. We want to get this vintage Camel Trophy cap. I mean, isn't that cool? And of course, a signed camel by all the contenders, including me. Okay, so um, let's do a little bit of deck tech. And this is the deck that I brought to the tournament. Um, it is my Shadow Spectre deck, named after the Elves of Deep Shadow. You see them there in the left bottom corner. And of course, the Hypnotic Spectres. I've got a full playset. And I've only uh, made one change to this deck, actually, since... Um since I made this picture, and that is that I replaced one of the basic mountains with a soul ring because I'm hoping to use my soul ring to get my Urnum Jins out early, and also it works great with the ice storms. And why in the first place didn't I put a soul ring in? No idea, you know. So <laughs> I just I decided to really uh, take out one of the mountains and put in a soul ring. Also, an interesting creature to note here is the um, the Arian. So that's Xira Arian, and you see her there on the left top. Uh, corner of the deck so she is one uh, red one black and one green and it is a uh, one two flyer and you can actually tap her for black red and green to draw a card so i'm really looking forward to use her it's a card from legends expansion this one comes from chronicle so it's a budget and um, yeah it's just a card you don't see often but i mean three to draw a card is better than four tap draw a card so that's what you have to pay for a jadum tome so I was figuring out, you know what, this is the color combination. It can also attack, you know, that can still be relevant in a deck with Berserks and Giant Groves. So let's try her out. So I'm really curious to see um, how she will perform in a tournament setting. And as you can see, I'm also doing that Ice Storm trick where I'm hoping to play out one of my Ramps uh, creatures early game. So a um, Elves of Deep Shadow or a Birds of Paradise and then have a game or a turn to Ice Storm to kind of uh, control my opponent and set him back in land and I'm gonna and I'm actually in front of land if you can still follow me in, uh, in what I'm saying and part of that uh, making sure that my opponent gets into trouble with his land drops that will hopefully give me the time to deploy a Hypnotic Spectre and then use my Hypnotic Spectre to um, to slowly let my opponent discard his entire hand. That would be a top scenario. Uh, but other than that, just the idea of slowing my opponent down with a quick ice storm and then using my hippie to kind of attack his hand size, that already on itself, I think, is a very strong tactic. So this is my deck. Now let's discuss the deck of my opponent. Okay, my opponent on the other side of the table is playing Dead Guy Ale. So that means he's playing white and he's playing black. He's playing with Disenchants and Swords. But then the deck gets really interesting because he's made some very original choices. He's playing with Lord of the Pit and he's playing with a full playset of anime deaths. So perhaps he has some kind of way of getting his Lord into the graveyard or he is simply waiting for me to do that job, then use an anime debt to get his Lord of the Pit out. And I do know that he also plays with Spirit Link, so he probably wants to Spirit Link his own Lord of the Pit, so making sure that he gets the damage that the Lord can do when you cannot sacrifice a creature that he gets that back in life because of the spirit link so basically he'll just stay on zero and he, he will have that Lord of the Pit to attack without really having to sacrifice any creatures to it so basically that's all I know about this deck so let's go to the games game number one and just to make it clear I am of course the one with the Timmy playment there on the left 
playing a force into a soul ring look at this start great start here with that chaos orb so we'll probably go and see a flip and i'm curious if we will also see an ice storm next turn untapping here drawing a card playing a taiga and there's that ice storm that's basically what i want to do with this deck is turn two play an ice storm and there is a swamp and i'm gonna flip so i'm gonna try to deny lands here and that's a hit. And moving on, you're untapping. So this is kind of the scenario that I'm hoping for. Oh, look at this. This kind of looks like the perfect draw from my side here. Playing an Urnum Jin, turn three. And there he goes, playing a basic planes. Maybe he has a Swords now. That could kind of help him a little bit, but he doesn't. Playing a second Urnum. And this is risky because you're playing against white. So if my opponent can find... A balance here, that's not a balance though. Interesting that he's playing this main board. It's a circle of protection for, I believe, black and for red. Oh, wow, to make it even more painful. A mind twist. I mean, he can only keep one hand and look at what he's discarding. That Wrath of God could have kind of saved him later. Wow, this is just very painful, and that's it. That's game, just super quick game number one, and, you know, a perfect draw for me. So um, let's just quickly go, well, we're going to sideboard, actually, but um, let's go to game two and uh, and see how that goes, and if my opponent is a little bit more lucky, and, you know, if but if I hit draws like this, it's going to be very difficult. Okay, here we go, game number two, and my opponent at least gets to start, and... Uh, you know, this was just pretty, pretty incredible uh, to see this whole scenario. I mean, for me, this was really almost a perfect draw, exactly what you want to have. But if my opponent would have found a balance there with that last draw, he would have been completely back into the game. I mean, that card is just so good when you're when you're behind. Let's take a look here. Opening here with a Scrubland passing turn. And there is a Bayou into... A Birds of Paradise, and it's a uh, it's a Birds of Paradise. This has seen some action. That's what I'm showing to my uh, my opponent here. Tapping for two, interesting. Playing a Death Lace, and that means for two black, he can counter green spells. And I'm quickly deploying my Ice Storm again. So again, a turn two Ice Storm. That's exactly what I want to do. And a Death Lace is two black. And look at this. Oh, and there is a Strip Mine animating the factory now and it looks like my opponent again is in trouble with the lands just has to pass here and can i find another urnum tapping three this time i'm finding a hypnotic specter and this is also great you know my trapping my opponent with a full grip finding a swamp here though passing turn on tapping and playing another land. This is another factory. I can pump it for three now with that winter factory. That means five damage, and he's going to lose a card. And again, things are looking bleak for my opponent here. Oh, wow, wow, wow. This is big. This is because I am just, I mean, he had one lifeline that was called balance, and I, I took it out of his hand here. Wow, how lucky am I? Incredible. Because that balance would have done wonders for him. And he only needed one planes from the top of his deck to play it out. Losing a Lord of the Pit. That's not really bad. That's actually good for him probably because he has those anime debts. But he's so far behind. Playing a Will o the Wisp. At least being able to chump block and making sure that he doesn't have to discard. And he can survive one more turn. Let's see what's going to happen. Because I do play with Berserks and with Giant Groves. Has to chum block here, so that means he's going to three. And then I play another hippie because I'm no longer afraid for that balance, so I'm just going for it. And that's it. Again, a very quick game. And I feel again the decision here was when I when I hit that balance. If he could have kept that balance and if, if he would have found that that, that second planes, man, then you have a whole new game. Uh, anyway, we played two of these games and we actually decided to, you know what? Let's play a third one. We have time. So let's go to game number three. Game number three. So we're playing here this bonus game. 
And hopefully we get to see a Lord of the Pit in action. And I do see it, a Lord of the Pit in his opening hand. And uh, I'm not sure what we're talking about, What uh, probably if we're keeping or not. And there we see a basic swamp and a bayou from my side passing turn. Let's see what the dead guy ale player can do in this third game. Hopefully he gets some more opportunity. At least I don't have a one dropper. So that means he'll have some time to deploy something. Playing a city of brass there. And there we go. Probably an ice storm then, I guess. Yes, there's an ice storm. Taking damage from my own city. Choosing actually to first uh, deal with the white threat. And there he goes. He's discarding the Lord of the Pit. And he does have a basic in hand, so probably this is part of his tactic. Taking a damage here, playing an Urnum. The 4-5 powerhouse from the Arabian Nights. And adding that damage. Oh, look at this! Anime Dead Lord of the Pit! Yes! I mean... It's just great to see, even even if it's against me. And I'm attacking here, so I'm assuming I have a Berserk. Oh, he's actually blocking, and I'm playing the Giant Grove. So that just means that he's losing his Lord of the Pit. Not sure if he minds, though, because that also means he doesn't get 7 damage. So maybe it would have been better not to attack, actually, now that I think about it. Anyway, played in Hypnotic Spectre after that, so maybe that was part of the tactic as well. And... Is he going to play a third land here? Because I still see that swamp. Okay, there's a scrub land there playing it out. And if he can find Wrath of God next turn, then things are already looking better. And let's see what I can do. I've got six damage on the board, so I might as well just go for it. And he's also going to lose a card. Doubting here, maybe I want to play a Berserk or another Giant Grove. Deciding not to. Losing a sinkhole here. And passing turn. I do see a Wrath of God there. And here we go. Wrath of God. End of the line for my creatures. Very well done. You don't see Wrath of God that often. Um, and that surprises me sometimes. Because it's a very good board sweep. And what am I going to do? Are playing a regrowth over the Hypnotic Spectre. Probably just because it can play at the same turn and hopefully apply some pressure next turn. So I'm hoping that he doesn't find a flyer. Maybe, I mean, he does have that, does have that mana number five in hand. So if he can play it out, we can see a Sarah actually decides to play another Wrath of God. You don't expect your opponent to do that, finding two Wraths. And now it's my go again, playing a Mishra's Factory, passing turn. Let's see. And there's that third land. Playing a circle of protection green. So that came in from the sideboard. And that's a difficult thing when you're playing against a deck with three colors. Taking a damage here. Well, it's going to work against this Urnum, the circle. That's true. Because what I wanted to say, it's difficult when you're playing against a deck with three colors. Because the threats are usually also divided over the colors. So a COP green works great against uh, the Urnums, but not against the other threats. And look at this, by the way. Anime Dead, Lord of the Pit is back. Spirit Link is on there. That means I'm in serious trouble here. Because this is kind of the combo that my opponent wants to assemble. And remember, I'm not playing with white, so I don't have any disenchants here. And getting rid of an enchantment with these colors is very hard. I don't play Tranquility. Maybe I should have boarded it in from the sideboard. And there's a double lightning bolt on my opponent, meaning he goes to six. And do I have... What do I have in hand then? Oh, and that's... Is that game already? Ah, oh, that's game because he takes the damage first. Okay. <laughs> now I remember. The thing is with, with Lord of the Pit and a card like Spirit Link is you get the damage first. And then you get the life total. So when he had when he played out his Lord of the Pit, you know, he did the anime dead. I kind of knew already, okay, now I can play a double bolt. He'll go from um, from 12 to 6. Then when it's his turn, he first takes the damage. 
and that means he's dead. So before he gets alive from the spirit link, he is already dead. So that's kind of the little little deck tag that we've got here. Um, okay, well, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks um, here giving you tournament magic from the Camel Trophy. And if you'd like to see more games of the Camel Trophy, keep an eye on the channel. I will be posting an update every Tuesday. So every Tuesday from now on, I will be posting a match from the Camel Trophy. So if you'd like to see tournament magic, you know, keep an eye on the channel every Tuesday. Uh, for now, thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like. Subscribe if you're not a member yet. According to my statistics, 50% of you is not a member. So if you want to join, I mean, feel free. It would be very helpful. Uh, leave a comment, also helpful. Click that notification bell because um, people keep telling me, people from YouTube keep telling me that's important. So I'm just going to pass on the message to you. And of course, before we're going, we are going to the end scroll to thank all my fantastic patrons because guess what? Timmy Talks has a Patreon page. So there's a link appearing right now. You can click on the link. You can visit and have a look and consider becoming my patron. For now, thank you very much for watching Timmy Talks and let's take a look at the end scroll. Ik het als fikker te samba kazee.